Hey, today we're going to be going through some troubleshooting on this Hobart Handler 120. Um, this machine is uh, 20 years old, but I don't use a welder a lot. You know, I bought it for just tinkering around, you know, doing some auto body repairs, you know, stuff like that. So it, it hasn't had a hard life. <laughs> Um, but it just quit and I you know I don't know when I, I really don't think it quit while I was using it I think it quit while it wasn't being used we're gonna be using the uh, manual that came with the unit I still have it, it has some troubleshooting charts in it part numbers and such as that to uh, to go through and, and try to figure out what's wrong with this thing if we go to the troubleshooting section in the Hobart manual there's two areas where it says that the wire feed motor does not run. And um, it gives you some other points to look at. Uh, no open circuit voltage, fan motor runs, wire feed motor does not run. Or wire feed, wire does not feed, uh, fan motor runs, and you have open circuit voltage. Well, I know the fan runs, and I know that I don't have any wire motor functions, but I'm not sure about the open circuit voltage. So let's check that first. I've got a piece of metal down there. Um, the ground electrode, ground clamp is attached to it. And I've got, even though I don't have wire feeding out of the gun, I do have some wire stuck out there so that it can touch the metal. On top and inside, I've got a voltmeter, some alligator clamps, and the clamps are attached to the um, output side of the welder so that I can monitor the voltage at the welder. I really don't care. You know, a lot of guys would tell you you need to be measuring the voltage at the gun. You do. If you're having a problem and you are looking to see how much voltage is at the gun, heck, I don't have any, I don't care about that right now. I just need to know if I have some voltage. So I'm going to turn the welder on. The fan's going to come on. And I want to see if there's any voltage in that meter when I try to weld. And there it is. You don't need a meter for that. I can hear it. So we know which troubleshooting chart to try to get. All right, open circuit voltage is normal. So, is the circuit breaker tripped? If it is, you need to check for a defective feed motor. All right, circuit breaker in this machine is right here, right there above the feed motor little white dot that's a switch press it in check it it's not stuck out so it should be good to go if you're in doubt you can pop the back cover off and do an ohms check on that uh, switch and see if there's continuity in it our next step is wire speed adjustment control open check rheostat that's your feed speed wire feed speed that's a rheostat if you are on zero or somewhere around you know that's going to be no wire feed and the fastest wire speed this is a 16 ohm rheostat so it should be something around 16 ohms at the lower setting and nearly nothing at the high setting so this is throttled back this is throttling the current back, and this is allowing it to nearly free flow. All right, so what we got is you just connect your, connect your multimeter to 
one end to one end of the rheostat and one end to the other end of the rheostat. I just chose to connect to this little lead here because I don't have to reach as far in there. It's the same difference. So I'm picking up the signal off the end of this wire here and at this terminal. And what we've got on position zero, I've got 16.8 ohms. And when I dial it over to position 10, 0.3 ohms, 0.2 ohms. So there's nothing wrong with this rheostat. It functions just fine. All right, moving on. The next step says rectifier defective, replace rectifier. Well, how about we check it first? <laughs> to check the rectifier, you're going to pull them likely in this machine. You're going to need to pull some stuff apart just to be able to get to it easier. Um, actually, this this machine, you will have to pull the lid off to get the rectifier out of there. If you have fingers that are small enough and you can undo all those little nuts and bolts in there without taking it apart then go ahead i think it's easier just take it apart all right so i'm going to disconnect the rectifier and do an ohms check on it in both directions to determine if it's good or bad i would like to point out that removing this um, showed me that there's a lot of corrosion and stuff so i cleaned off both sides of all three plates as well as the leads that go to them with a wire brush. All right, so I've got my ohms meter set. I, I absolutely can't do this one-handed, so I'm just going to envision this with me. Test your meter. Test good. You put one end here on the center plate, go to each other plate, you get nothing. And if you swap ends, you get a reading there and a reading there so you get a reading this way but if you swap the leads the other way you don't get a reading your rectifier is good if your wire feed speed wrist that sounds like this one did I don't care what the ohm meter says you need to take this thing out and clean it with a a stone so let's let's do that real quick these points get dirty they get ground uh, dirt ground in them in some cases the gaps in between them get filled up with trash and you'll need to dress them out this is a commutator stone and you can use this to flatten out those contact points just give them a little, just dress them out, hold your file flat. It's not a file, it's a stone. Get it all flat, brush it off, move your contact point out of the way, get the other side. I'm not pressing hard at all, I'm just trying to clean the oxidization and dirt and grime off of there all right now take a rag clean that off you probably don't need to goof around with that contact point because it is worn to the profile of all this right here so even with that little bit of cleaning it's already quieter this is what it sounded like before and this is what it sounds like now. World of difference.
quiet and functional. Well, that does it for this um, this repair. Just a dirty wire feed rheostat. That was it. So I'm going to put all this stuff back together and do a little welding on the exhaust pipe on the old Chevy and move on to something else. I probably got a box sitting at the office right now waiting on me to go pick up to do some more fixing. <laughs> so, hey, appreciate y'all watching. Sorry it took so long. If you ever have a problem with that, just follow the troubleshooting instructions in your owner's manual. Hopefully you did not throw them away. I'm out.